Welcome to Monday Night TPK. Hey, welcome back. This is Monday Night TPK. My name is Kyle, and you are listening to a 5th edition Real Play Dungeons and Dragons podcast. So around me at the table are four, uh, four players who like to like to play the game. You know what? And I don't I don't hate these guys. I just hate the game they're playing. Right? That's life. You know that's that's the moral. You don't hate the people who are who are taking part in it. You hate the system that they're playing. Right? If we're playing fourth edition. Oh God, please no. <laughs> oh no, no, it's fifth edition. Never mind. I I don't hate this edition. Actually, I don't hate fourth edition either. So I don't. I didn't that. hate it, but it just wasn't my favorite. We need to do a one shot sometime. Do it all in forty. No. I don't think I can remember how to play 4 you. It's so different. I've DM'd 4 you, but it's been a long time. I, I don't want to waste my time on that. <laughs> I DM'd 4 you once. One campaign. That was it. Hey, Ryan. Uh, what has your experience been with 4th edition? 4th edition? Um, very hit and miss, I think. Um, I played in it. I played a couple sessions in it, and I DM'd a session, and it was... Rather short lived. Hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Sam. Yes. Have so many were played with you. Mm-hmm. As a DM. Yep. We ran well like four or five games. Yeah. Yep. And it was your campaign, and then we also played mine, which ran for like a year and a half. Sam. Present. Uh, have you ever played fourth edition? Yes, I have. Did you enjoy it? Uh, so, but my understanding is. Based on the DM, it was 4th edition plus some other stuff, plus some homebrews. Oh, okay. Uh, it was it was pretty good. I ended up very, very powerful, and I had wings by the end, so that was exciting for me. <laughs> and that was probably, what, second level? Uh, Something like that, yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Dana, mm-hmm. how much 4th edition have you played? I have actually not played any, because I think it's absolutely dumb. Oh. And, uh, you said that when I first started. Harsh words. <laughs> Uh, I mean, no. Add us at tw- on Twitter about how much you disagree <laughs> with Dana. Um, but just all of the things that have changed. <laughs> like, it very much focused and rewards min maxing, and it seems like that people who really, really liked it don't care about role playing or story. We had a player quit 5e because of how min max 4e was, and he couldn't do that. Yep. You all know who that is. So but I, we won't say that on, on it. I. I been really enjoying fifth edition because it takes out the min maxing. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things I like the most about it. Yeah. I wish there was a little bit more customization for some things, but yeah, because that's what I that's what I miss about two point five. Cool. Yep. All right. Glad that we all have such strong opinions about other editions of Dungeons and Dragons. Um. Oh yeah, that's right. We're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Pathfinder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you played the new Pathfinder 2.0? No, I have not touched that. I, I know zero about it. Yeah, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about. It. I never played the original Pathfinder. <sighs> the it's pretty much like three five. Yeah, that's what I've days. heard. That's what I've heard. Okay. With a few things are different, but mm-hmm. yeah. I think that Grassland is a lot easier, in my opinion. Grassland yeah. is a lot more straightforward. And and uh, at first level, you're a little bit more beefier. Like yeah. you kind of you know, like even out, but that first level. Just a little bit stronger. It's not like D and D where you you you're afraid to fight anything until right. like level five. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you guys are only level three. Three. So far, yeah. most of you have uh, done pretty well. Mm-hmm. We've come really close to dying quite a few times. I'm not looking at you right now. <laughs> you mm-hmm. feel attacked. I mean, I am You've surprised. Been attacked, right? I'm surprised with some of the down. things that we fought that we've only officially lost one character so far. Right. It's been real close. Mm-hmm. It's been real close, Ben. I think you guys are a smidge beefier than... Ray well, yeah, we also didn't go off a Ray or the... Yeah. Uh, the other one. Where you, like, have the set number and you put your stats out. Mm-hmm. For my other life cleric friends out there, this game is very stressful. <laughs> very stressful time. The moral of that story is, never play a life cleric. <laughs> and everyone will die. <laughs> All right. Speaking of death and dismemberment, hey Sam, what happened last week? Oh golly, I just don't know. It's a good thing I take notes. 
All right. Yeah, you take great notes. Last time, <laughs> the new guy, Ravane, studied the rubble he created. Gilly invited Ravane to join the group. Gilly gave Ravane info that he's in Chult, which is a peninsula with lots of zombies. Ravane asked if the orc, Rixer, is trouble. That was that was a time. Brielle uh, kept watch while the talk occurred. Brielle uh, saw an enormous anthill that was approximately eight feet tall. Ravane wanted to talk to Brielle, so Gilly went to get her. In the meantime, Ravane asked um, denial questions about Rixer being an orc. Uh, uh, Brielle joined the group and Ravane apologized to everyone. And he stated that he was trying to get to a sacred alvin place the quick way through teleportation. Didn't work. Bummer. Rixer poked the dinosaur, the big T Rex, <laughs> with a stick. It was dead, thank goodness. Um, and bugs had started to eat away at its um, flesh and skin through, via puncture marks. Uh, Rixer poked the dinosaur in its squishy bits a lot. Gilly invited Ravane to join the group again and asked um, if we should keep moving forward. Brielle went to assist Rixer because we wanted to explore the dinosaur more. Uh, so we all pondered how the T-Rex died. Iku said she wasn't sure what could have killed the T-Rex because of the round holes and increased moisture around the body. The group decided that this uh, may be the wizard's doing that we are currently tracking. Uh, we, tried, we tried to get back on the trail to follow the humanoid and the lizard man. The tracks were discovered to walk around the camp and then disappear. Ravane uh, thought that magic could have been used to hide their tracks. So now what? Uh, Iku said we were a day's travel from the river and the group talked about our canoe situation. That we only mm -hmm. have one, but we need all of our stuff as well. So the group started to talk about our canoe situation because we only have one canoe full of stuff and we need a canoe full of stuff and a canoe full of people. Um, Rixer suggested making a new canoe and then there were major discussions on using the enlarge and reduced spell to make a pop-up canoe trailer. But eventually, um, after looking for downed trees in the T-Rex's path and being unsuccessful, we decided to change our plan to make two sidecars to our canoe in order to carry our stuff. The end. Fantastic. Sounds to me like a whole bunch of, I don't know, fun stuff happened, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fun. This was a good example of some character development, some, some plot exploration. Poking a stick into a dead Tyrannosaurus. That was my favorite part. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell. Um, so the episode ended with you guys making a plan. But you're still in this goblin, well, the remnants of a goblin village. Right. What's up, folks? What are we doing? I said we had to head back towards the river. Yeah, um... Do we want to be trying to collect good sticks slash small branches as we go? Yeah, yeah. we're going to need a makeshift something. Yeah, like Rixer and Braille are going to be busy carrying the canoe, but yeah. between three other people we can probably... We can also keep a out. lookout and just kind of point out things. Mm -hmm. drop, the can drop the canoe gently when we need to throw the sticks in mm -hmm. and pick it back up. Yeah, this is a big bundle. Cool. Um, it's right around midday. So you get about half a day's travel uh, that you can get behind you before nightfall. Okay. Uh, Iku has no problem kind of figuring out what direction uh, to head to, you know, the closest get back to the same river you guys had been traveling on before. So no problems there. And uh, you guys set off. And you're able to kind of go through the rest of the jungle for uh, several hours. Um. And as you leave the Goblin Village, uh, you, keeping a kind of an eye out, you do see several other places where goblins have set tripwire traps and a few other like defenses uh, that seem to be designed to keep people away, but they're a little bit easier to see once you're 
you have your back to the village kind of deal. Okay. You guys have no problem taking those out uh, or, or avoiding them altogether. Um, you know, you, you do occasionally see uh, more like remains of sentient people, creatures uh, that have been staked very brutally to trees and uh, some of them have been like uh, eaten, look like their skins have been eaten and it's pretty grotesque. Gross. But the further you get from the village, these slowly disappear until after an hour or so you totally lose, you know, you stop finding these, these horrible signs. Uh, and you're actually able to spend the rest of your day walking towards the river totally in peace. Nice. Um, you see at one point, you know, some some very nice looking birds. They squawk at you <laughs> as you disturb them. Uh, but after, you know, several hours, night begins to fall. Okay. And I'm assuming you probably make camp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of look for a good spot. Yeah. Okay, how far are we from the river? Um, Iku's gonna estimate uh, probably about a half day's travel. Okay. So by the middle of the following day you should be able to to find the river. Okay. So you guys are actually far away. Um Ruvain. Yes. Uh, as this will be the first time you are making camp with these these people and I don't know how used to making camp you are. Is there anything you want to do or try or experience? Um, I do actually have a thought. Sure. Um, to Gilly and Brielle. Mm-hmm. Um, you said that she likes to scout. Mm-hmm. Um, Brielle, maybe... You could, I could accompany to you, accompany you on a scouting excursion, so I can set up some uh, alarms. Mm-hmm. Gilly signs. That's not a bad idea. Um, Brielle has her own thoughts. <laughs> She'll, I can set them so that they won't be audible. She'll she'll sign that that's not a bad idea, but Gilly. bringing somebody along that I know may not be as sneaky as me might not be a good idea. Mm-hmm. Are you sneaky? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> no. How about this? You guys go ahead and you can tell me where some good spots to put some alarms would be. Uh, Bria will Bria will suggest that she should probably do a perimeter sweep and then I could point a few things out. Okay, Bria's going to do a perimeter sweep and then she'll point some stuff out to you. So I'll do... How do a sweep? Listen, look for anything that. Make sure there's nothing nearby. Make sure it's a good place to set up camp. That's a natural 20. 23 perception. Yeah, uh, Brielle can scout around and the whole area seems, I mean, as secure as anywhere else. Um. You know, you can you can point out uh, a few areas like, you know, like there's a natural hill or something, or terrain features that you can. If someone will, if something or someone was going to come after you, they probably would come along these routes. Okay. So you can find you know two or three different spots. Okay. Um. I will come back and I'll point a few areas out. Which would appear to be uh, weaker points in a perimeter. And she will also, she'll sign to Gilly and to let everybody know that there is, doesn't seem to be anything in the vicinity of where we're deciding to camp. So, we should be safe. If the episode has been abnormally quiet so far, <laughs> uh, we may have made some adjustments, so hopefully the rest of it isn't isn't too hard to listen to. 
We were being sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> too, too sneaky, perhaps. Oops. Ooh. All right, so where were we? Setting up camp, I guess. Cool. So camp is set up. We'll set up camp. I did a perimeter sweep. He's putting up yeah. probably alarm, I'm assuming. Yep. Uh, it takes me 11 minutes to set up an alarm, and it, there's nothing that says that it's a one-time cast. I, it doesn't require concentration. It doesn't end when the cast again, so... Really? Cool. Yeah. What's the what's the range on you sensing it? One mile. Yeah. Nice. Crazy. If I make it so that it only goes off my head. Hmm. Which I will. Because I don't think you want the sound of a bell ringing. No. <laughs> no. Uh, well, so I guess we yeah. make a fire. And Evening routines. Eat our, eat our dinner and do whatever little things that we do. All right, cool. Just the, the typical night. Oh, that also triggers my ward. Awesome. Do we need to reestablish... Um, Orders of watches because of a new party, quote unquote. Well, we now have three people that can see in the dark. Hmm. So, plus, uh, plus Igu. Yeah. So, we could evenly split off watches. I mean, he's just not going to care. Who he's put with. So yeah. we all take the the last four hours that she typically does. So I mean Gilly usually goes with you so she can alarm people if Brielle sees something and make breakfast. <laughs> so I mean Iku has no problem taking uh I don't know, a couple hours, a couple even watches in a row. Four hour span if necessary. So, you guys were able to spend the night in the jungle, um, right around, I don't know, around midnight or so, uh, the rain picks up, um, pretty heavily, and it rains pretty hard for about 45 minutes to an hour, uh, so you guys probably would have to, like, you know, pull out whatever rain gear or tarps or something. We would have set that up already yeah, as right. part of the pre-camp up camping. Um, so it gets, it gets quite wet. Um, and then, you know, after the very heavy rain, it doesn't really storm necessarily as the winds don't get it higher than you guys can accommodate for. But uh, other than a heavy rain, you make it through the night pretty much un, unaccosted. That's good. We can refill our water because we set up our we haven't water we've only too. used a day or two since, so yeah. I know you guys didn't say it this time, but in the past you've specified that you set up your water catchers. Yeah, I mean at this point it's just kind of part of the setup for camp. Right. Yeah. And they're overflowing with water. So we're probably just full again because yeah. I know we haven't even used half of what we had before. Yeah. So I would say so. I would say you guys are fine with water. So you guys can pack your stuff back up into your canoe and set back out again. Um, your morning is peaceful. Your morning is relatively quiet. Uh, a couple times you hear something a little bit larger just out of the view, off to the sides, but nothing kind of comes towards you. Things move away. Things get out of your way. Um, here and there you, you spot evidence that... Uh, Maybe this goblin tribe that you just passed might have been hunting in this area pretty mm -hmm. regularly. Um, snare traps in particular here and there that have either been triggered or and, uh, still set you've come across. Um, and before too long, you begin to hear the sound of heavily rushing water. You hear mm -hmm. it well before you're going to see it. Yeah. Um, and you can tell you're getting closer and you're on your way there. And just as you're like, it's getting louder and louder, above you, you just kind of, uh, above the trees, you guys are able to kind of come up to the top of a low hill, and you see an enormous stone head of a crocodile above the treetops. 
On mm-hmm. our side or on the other side of the river? You just see it. You don't even see the river yet. Oh, we haven't seen the river yet. Okay. I ask uh, Iku what that is. Um. Iku will say to you, Oh, well this is unexpected. We are, I didn't realize we were so close to the house of the crocodile. Hmm. Um, I spoke to you about this some some time back while we were still on the river, that we were going to pass the House of the Crocodile, and mm-hmm. that um, the Order of the Gauntlet had set up a camp there once upon a time. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, we wanted to... Oh, yeah, we wanted to stay mm-hmm. away from there. Well, <laughs> it appears to be right there. Great. Um, and she will lead you kind of down further to the riverbank, um... Until you can stand at its edge and the river, you know, Sho- I think it's Shoshin Stars were here before. Uh, the river is large and wide and rushing and moving and on across the other side of the river, you see probably an 80 foot stone statue of a man with a crocodile slung over his back. Uh, he, is, he is sitting. He's in a sitting position, and he has been has been carved into the side of the large cliff face. Hmm. Um, and you can also see that at his feet, kind of built up around his feet, it looks like a small encampment. Uh, you can see um, two very very large circular tents, um, but then. Maybe almost a dozen smaller rectangular tents, some of which have been partially destroyed, um, set up in very, very neat rows. Um, you can see animal pens uh, and most, I don't know, probably to your interest, uh, tied up at the river's edge are two rowboats. <laughs> Catchphrase. <laughs> uh, we wanted to avoid these guys, right? Yes. Does the order? Are these, what are the, are are these the fist? Is this that who they were? Is the order of the gauntlet? The order, order of the, the gauntlet. gauntlet. Yeah. We wanted to avoid them. I think. Give me a history check. Okay. You know, unless you, I want. Unless you want to talk to Iku about this, uh, give me a history check to see what you remember from what she told you. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you are in a good position to ask questions, right? Huh? You're in a good position to ask questions. Yeah. Just, just the history check on Aura the Gauntlet, because I uh-huh. don't think they're necessarily bad people. <laughs> uh, go for it. Yeah. Uh, Thirteen. Order of the Gauntlet is a, I mean, you know, you're going to get some information with the 10. Uh, Order of the Gauntlet is stationed at a Boulder's Gate. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a kind of a paramilitary-ish police force that kind of patrols Boulder's Gate and mm-hmm. its interest in the world. Um, you're not really sure what they would be doing out here. Or no, wait a second. I'm using the wrong name. I think you're trying to say I twist. Because Order of the Outlet, yeah, I am so sorry, man. You are correct. The Flaming Fist. Yeah, that's yep. what I thought. It was supposed wow. to be the fist. Yep. Yeah. Like, I thought it was supposed to be the fist. That's like, I started going through my notes again because I was like, I yeah, I'm sorry. the fist. Order of the Gala, isn't that like one of the big guilds for yeah. Adventures League stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Flaming Fist, rather. Is the paramilitary so like, gauntlet just clenches all of a sudden? Yeah. <laughs> My notes say flying fist trying to take over. Flaming fist, yeah. They're the ones that kind of are based wow. out of Boulder's Fort Gate. Valerian, north of Nez. Bullies, thieves, and worse is my what mm-hmm. we're about to say. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Okay, so I I got like a twenty three. So we so, basically know we want to stay away from them. Well, you could also said because when you guys met the Aarakocra who kind of like landed or not landed, but hovered above you, was talking to Iku about this camp. Mm-hmm. He told her that it had been abandoned. Mm. And she hadn't known that, at that point at least. Mm. 
Are there any like um, banners or markings at this encampment, like a flag? Um, you do see a flag, uh, tattered, uh, but flying from a pole. Okay. Um, has a symbol on it? It has the fist. Okay. The fist okay. symbol on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd rather not. Yeah, we can... They got boats. Yeah, but it's across the river. So? Uh, well, we'd have to cross the river. We have a boat. Uh Uh-huh, and then go get the boats and sneak away. In a boat. I think I could get one of those boats. Mm. Can you, though? (laughs) (laughs) See if the dice gods deem that I can get one of those boats. But Brielle thinks she can get one of those boats. What do you want to do, Matt? It's risky. We could easily just make our own stuff and go. Or we can steal a rowboat that will be identified in a by a group bigger than us that will put a put a put a, a mark on our our heads. They won't know we took it. They won't know I took it. Well, yeah, but if other members of the group see us rolling down the river all so casual, they'll be like, bah, and then they'll attack us. Well, they probably attack us anyway. I, don't I know. mean, with the way that they've been described to us, they're probably going to attack us anyway. That's true. Which is why we wanted to avoid them in the first place. Right. Surprise. <laughs> I don't know. If you think you can do it, I believe in you. Don't die. Do you need me to come with you? Like, how do you want to make this work? I don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead yet. <laughs> Great. Mm. You know me. I usually just play it by ear. Huh. Yeah. That. Okay. Well, that's a choice. I mean... What does the rest of the group think? Do you think we should get another boat? Mm-hmm. Or do we want to just stick with the plan of using tarps? Mm, I guess the benefit of choosing tarps is we don't have to worry about coming across the same situation in the future. True. You so said there's boats tied up and um, there's a, like, a camp or something set up nearby? or. Yeah, they have two boats set up by the river, tied up by the river, right. near their camp. Near their camp. Lots of rectangular tents, two bigger circular tents. Like this is a encampment. Mm-hmm. All at the feet of this huge statue. Because I mean, pros. <laughs> if we get a, if we steal a boat, we have a boat. Like it's going to be more stable, more secure than our tarp sidecars that we're going to make. Con to getting a boat is if we have to get back off of the river at some point, are we just going to ditch the rowboat anyway and be in the same situation like Dana was saying? Whereas the tarp situation, we could just fold over the canoe Mm -hmm. and carry. That's why I brought it up to the group. I could get a boat. I could try to get a boat. I could die trying to get a boat. If you guys decide to get a boat, I might have something to assist. Also, kind of the collapsible thing is they're not as sound structure-wise. So if we reach rough waters, we may lose some of our stuff. Yeah. Um, Iku would know how rough the river gets, right? Between here and where we're going? She totally would. And let me look at a map so that I know Iku knows. Um, the, the river here between uh, where we are and the Aldani Basin, which is where we are going, is, is relatively clear. It is. Hmm. Um, it will open up 
uh, much wider once we reach the basin. Um, I don't foresee any, any rapids or, or exceptionally rough spaces that I'm aware of. I think in regards to travel and convenience and less waste, we should just make our tarp sidecars that can easily flip over the canoe while we're carrying it. And not worry about additional weight. Or like just stealing a, a, a boat to ditch it in a little while anyway. I don't know though. That's my opinion. And I am but one mere halfling. Oh, Gilly, do not sell yourself so short. Hmm. <laughs> ha! Ha! I see what you did there. That's funny. That was... Because I'm a short person. Oh my, I am so sorry. I am so embarrassed. I'm that was little, not... I'm a little person. That was not my intention. That's okay. It was funny. Um, as you guys are debating this, though, Iku will point out that... As far as she can see from here, the camp does seem to be abandoned. Yeah. Mm. She's not hearing anything like standing across the river. Again, I could go scope it out. I mean, taking a boat's more dangerous than just sneaking and just double checking if anyone's in there. That's fair. It wouldn't be the first time we've scouted out a camp. Yeah. What's our uh, distance away from the camp? Um, you are across the river, which at this point is about 25 feet wide. Okay. I would assume that we're still like in the tree line while we're talking about this, just in case there's somebody over there. I mean, something like I would have 15, 15 20 feet at least from the shore, or the bank of the river, rather. I'm thinking I could do that minor illusion spell. And you make something that could be considered a threat nearby the camp. See if anybody comes rushing out to uh, deal with it. Or directly in the middle of the camp. Hmm. Well, that's too far away. But do like somebody approaching. Yeah. See if somebody comes out and... How colorful are you? Uh, (laughs) Dark purple. Dark purple and blue. Like vibrant. Could use the forest to disguise him so he can get closer. That's true. Let's do it. Tell me what you want to do, and we'll, we'll work this out. I mean, we've made stuff out of those books. See what I can do. Make a little moving bush. <laughs> Closer. Sits down. Little hands pop out of the, the bush. Wiggly, 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 wiggly. <laughs> Super stealth. That's a bit. Uh, let's say a f- you know, 15 to try and disguise him. What skill are you using? Survival? Because I'm camouflaging him. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> um, you... you would have mud and dirt. You'd have mud and tree leaves and sticks and <laughs> stuff sticking out of you. you Dirty your clothes up as much as possible. A moderately okay ghillie suit. Ha. Ha. <laughs> Just has to get close enough. Okay, so I guess we'll try this. Ew, 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 ew. Some sticks. <laughs> it's poking out. Okay, so you're now covered in. Mm-hmm. Mud and twigs and uh, I don't know all those fun things. What are you doing, right? Oh, gotta get to the other side of the river first. 
Okay. It's there. I guess I'll try to creep up close enough so I can get the illusion maybe 15, 20 feet away from the border of the camp. I guess let me ask you this. How are you getting across the river? That's, yeah. How about you only need to get by the river? Right, that was my thought too. I don't yeah. know if the range is in your spell, but... 30 feet. If you get near the river, that puts it in the almost... Not in the middle of the camp, but... But 10 feet in, at least. Yeah. You can make the illusion by the goblins. What goblins? Not goblins. <laughs> <laughs> Boats. Hmm. Yeah, um, right at the river's edge, I would say you could make the, your illusion by the boats. So, I'm making an assumption here, because I said goblins, so that's kind of a feeling, but I'm assuming that I've known about, they mentioned that there's been goblins around. I mean, yeah. we've been walking for a day, I'm yeah. sure some of us sure. would have told you about the stuff we've encountered. So, so that's my choice for an illusion, just sure. to... A small annoying goblin. Uh, it's a still image, but it looks like it's um, like digging at the boats. Yeah, you can absolutely make that. You can, you can get that. Yeah. Um, it's there. Everybody can see it. Yeah. Uh, let's go. Well, glass for a minute, and I guess I'll just observe it for a minute to see if anybody comes around and going, get away from that. <laughs> a minute passes, and nothing. Nothing. Um, have we, have we determined if there's like quippers or anything in this river? You have not. You have not yet encountered <laughs> quippers in this river. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys haven't spent a lot of time in the river. That's true. Uh, I would like to talk to Iku about swimming across the river real quick. If that's any da- is that there's any danger in doing that? Um. She will tell you that, I mean, it's got a current, um, and it's moving, I mean, not super, super fast, but it's very, very steady current. Uh, the water's not the cleanest. She'll advise you to not get any in your mouth. Yeah, we've talked about not um, drinking. Especially it, so. don't swallow any, or you're going right. to risk getting throat leeches. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's really it. It's possible there could be quippers. Quippers, she'll tell you the quippers do live in the river. Um, various types of uh, aquatic dinosaurs sometimes live in the river. Crocodiles sometimes live in the river. Balls deep, guys. She doesn't. She doesn't <laughs> see those things from the surface at the moment, but she'll tell you. She did, you know, <laughs> anything can happen. Swim, guys. Um, uh I want to swim. I want to swim across the river. Oh God! Okay. Um, do you attempt to just go straight across? I mean, the current's going to push me a bit, but I will go as straight as the current will allow will allow me to go. Give me an athletics check. Uh. Thirteen. Um, so you're able to successfully get across. Uh, I was looking for a fifteen to do it, probably just exactly what you wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, if it pushes me down a little bit, that's fine because yeah. that puts me into the woods and I'm not like directly. Yeah, and that's and that's where where I was going to go with this okay. is that you get pushed um, a great pretty far, like probably like sixty to eighty feet further Oof. downstream. Okay. Than what you really wanted to be. Okay. Um, but you are able to clear it. Okay. Um, and now you are like very fully on the south side of this right. of this encampment. Um, I'll head back, head back, just head back towards the camp, and then when I get about twenty feet or so away, I'll start to sneak in. From the south side of the camp. From yeah, the side of the that I'm on now. Yeah. So you're, just sneak but you're on the beach. I'll like get into the woods a little bit and then stealth my way towards. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that for sure. That's a lot better of a roll. Um, what is my stealth right now? That's a twenty-three. Nothing seems to react to your movements. Uh, sneak into the camp. 
Um, you're going to come in... Because at this point, your goal is not to go in by the boats. It's going to be going... Right, by, going, yeah. yeah, more towards where the, the tents and stuff are at. Um, so, now that you're a lot closer, um, you can see there's a, there's a cluster of four um, tents, and they're about 10 feet by 10 feet. Um, sorry. Five feet by ten feet, five feet wide and ten feet deep, um, and you get the sense that they're each um, there's two two bunks in each tent, and there's like I said four tents that will cluster together here. Mm -hmm. The the two closest to the, the jungle, the back ends are completely just like slashed and ripped open, so you can see that you can see into see the, right and into you can it. see cots, and there's uh, just ripped apart personal effects and clothing just strewn into the mud and it's been beaten in. Um, and it looks like it's been picked through further and pulled apart. Um, uh, and then the, the two tents beyond that, uh, the back sides are intact, but like in the breeze, a little bit of a breeze off the river and they are kind of like even disattached a little bit and they're flopping and you can see on the okay. inside a little bit, there's same thing, just totally just trashed. Okay. Um, before walking directly into the camp, I'll do a check, make sure that they hadn't set up any traps or anything. Look like that's a 17 on the die, so that's going to be, uh, 19. You're not finding any traps or anything. She's going to just walk in to the middle and then head towards the boats, I guess. Yeah, um, you, you walk in and you, uh, you're going to see... Like those two bigger circular tents, mm -hmm. kind of a little bit out past where you probably the route's going to take you. Um, between the two of them, and you're going to come right kind of right by this, is one uh, really really big, like five feet around um, fire pit with stones. Mm -hmm. it looks like there was a uh, spit had been kind of put in the middle of it, but it's just got you know coal ashes inside mm -hmm. of it. Um, you're going to walk over um, signs of, like, battle. Like, all kinds of just broken gear and equipment. Um, just torn up ground, like, right by this pit next to these next to these four tents. But then you can kind of, like, go down, top down to your left. It kind of slopes down a little bit to a, kind of a larger sandy beach mm -hmm. where you see the two rowboats uh, are lashed to a uh, metal... Um, pole that had been like pounded into the sand. Okay. Um, boats seem intact. There's nothing wrong with them. Um. Yeah, the boats are. Um, the for the most part they're on the sand. The back end looks like the water kind of comes up to the very back end of them, but they seem to be intact. There's uh, two oars sitting in each one of them. Uh, Brielle will sign across the river towards where she's assuming Gilly is. Or Gilly, it should be able to at least see her. Sign camp's empty. Do we want to see if we need to raid it for anything, or should we just go? Guys, the camp's empty. Uh, do we want to go raid it? Oh, raiding. Fascinating. Uh, hold on. Uh, Gilly will sign back. Can you roll over a boat for us? You have a boat. The canoe that's full of stuff that we can't right. fit people in. It's still a boat. Can we fit the, you could just the leave. people who's... Oh, you don't want to swim across. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't. I think Rixer will be fine swimming across. You two, though. Yeah, I'm not swimming across <laughs> that. Plus two. I'm a, I'm a crocodile appetizer. <laughs> Um, I mean, Brielle will sign it. She, yeah, she can bring a boat over. It's not a problem. Because that way we, we can take all of the stuff. We can take the canoe across and the robots right. and then just leave from there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, Brielle would have no problem unlatching a boat yeah. and kind of, you know, launching it. And again, there's a bit of a, bit of a current, yeah. but now you're a boat. Right. It's going to take you a little time, but you can row it across um, and beach it next to where these guys have been hiding out. Okay. And really, it's just going to take a matter of time to situate gear between two boats and get people you know, 
now you've got a canoe and a rowboat. Yeah. Um, they don't matter anymore. Sorry. <laughs> Irrelevant. <laughs> I know how that how important it is. <laughs> uh, in terms of like what kind of gear each one can carry, st- in terms of stats, they're identical. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So load up the stuff and then go raid yeah. the camp. That's what we want to do, or we can just head out. Either way. You guys gotta decide that. Did you see anything useful? Pretty much stuff is that right? Everything's torn up. The tents are useless. Uh, the fire pit was cold. This has been abandoned for a while. I will say one thing that I think <clears throat> caught Brielle's eye, which I didn't think to describe. Um, going, cause she would have been able to see this just fine. Going past the two bigger tents. There is kind of a crude trail that goes to the feet of the statue, mm-hmm. and between their feet, between the feet, is a staircase that goes up to a platform, and there is a large uh, stone door between the between the knees of the statue. Crap, guys! We might have found our first dungeon. Was there anything? She'll bring that up as well. She will tell you about the stairway to the door. Guys, there's a door. In the statue. Uh, she'll ask Iku if Iku knows anything about worshipping or uh, maybe a hidden temple in here somewhere. Uh, was this the crocodile guy? What was he? Uh, this is the house of the crocodile. The house of the crocodile. Was that like a clan or some kind of religious group? In the early days of the world, man stood by the banks of a river, frightened. Crocodile raised his head from the water and asks, What troubles you, cousin man? Man said, I must cross this river, but I fear to enter the water alone, because it teems with your brethren. Crocodile replied, It's true, you would not be safe, but I will carry you across the river, safely on my back, if you promise to return the favor. Man agreed, and Crocodile bore him safely across the river, across the water. When they reached the far bank, Man asked, How can I repay you? Crocodile replied, I wish to see the realm of humans, but I fear to go there alone, because it teems with your brethren. You must carry me on your back across your realm. Man had been tricked, but a promise is a promise. So he carried the crocodile safely on his back across the entire realm of humans, a journey that lasted many years. He also swore in his anger that never again would men and crocodiles be friends. And so it has remained to this day. And this... This statue that you see before you is a reminder of the truth behind that story and about the promise that was tricked into being. Hmm. Um, I do know that there is some type of temple inside of this house. I have never been there. I do not know what lies within. Could it be why the Flaming Fist at camp here? Um, The Flaming Fist... Uh, had the goal of taking over all of Chult to call their own, to plunder its riches. Uh, I suspect they camped here out of convenience. Mm. They can't have not noticed it. It might have already been plundered, if that was their goal. I do not know. Perhaps, perhaps the, it is full of traps and other magics that may make it hard for some to enter. There is much in this jungle that is full of danger and magic. Maybe they just weren't smart enough to figure out a puzzle. Perhaps. Maybe. (laughs) Ralph Aang is like drumming his fingers together excitedly. (laughs) The new guy wants to go. (laughs) Brielle's going to point. I think he wants to go. (laughs) At the same time that Gilly's like, I think he wants to go. (laughs) <laughs> Forgive him with his curiosity. <laughs> no, it's cool, man. I mean, we can try it. We can try to see what's in there. 
Let's have a look see. We can always use. Looky, look inside. We can always use more stuff items for our journey. <laughs> I mean, we don't know what yeah. we're going up against for to try and get rid of this curse. Right. If curse? I mean, not oh, right. You haven't. You we in, haven't actually told him yet. Yeah. But you would be aware of the dying curse. It yeah. Permeates enough of uh, uh, the world that you would be aware of its existence. And for this conversation to continue, I guess Gilly would be paraphrasing what Brielle said. Sure. And then answering back. Okay. No, we don't have to do that. (laughs) All right. So it seems to me that a large decision, a large decision needs to be made. And I highly suspect that uh, next week we'll come to the table to make that decision and to see if we plunder the depths of the House of the Crocodile, or if we continue on the journey in order to seek out the wisdom at Mumbala. That was just curiosity. Uh, comes into a play both in-game and out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey, that's all for tonight. Thanks for listening. If you want to get to know us better, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Monday Night TPK. You can also find Monday Night TPK at Above the Table Games on YouTube. Don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes. Thanks for listening, and we'll always save a seat at the table just for you. Antibiotics make me